Owning a BMW hardtop convertible can be pretty cool. Well, for some people. Essentially, it gives you the best of both worlds. With the top up, from far away, it looks like an ordinary coupe. And when you want it to look like a convertible, all you have to do is drop the top. I don't know about you guys, but uh, that looks pretty cool. But of course, there are a few drawbacks to owning a BMW with the hardtop convertible. And in today's video, I'm gonna give you guys a few reasons why you shouldn't buy one. All right, so first I'm gonna go ahead and start with something that's simple. And by simple, I mean simple to explain, but it's very, very annoying. Okay, so ignore the, the dark tint that I have going on here, but these taillights right here, they look identical to the coupe version of the 335i, yet they're not the same. Essentially, I've been wanting to upgrade these to the updated LED ones, people call it the LCI taillights, but it's not that easy for a convertible owner. And what I mean by not being easy is that it's hard to get a good deal on LCI taillights for the convertible version of this BMW. I've tried to find them used and they're pretty much non-existent. And then aftermarket pretty much just caters for the E92 and the E90, which is the sedan and the coupe version. I haven't found a single vendor that sells them for the E93 yet. So the only other option I have is to go to the BMW dealer and pay over two grand for LCI taillights and I'm not gonna do that. Same goes with the trunk. It's the same story as the taillights. It looks exactly like the trunk lid on the BMW E92 coupe version, yet it's a totally different trunk. So let's just say for instance that you ruin the trunk lid on your convertible BMW and you wanted to save a couple of bucks and didn't wanna buy that directly from BMW. Well, one of your options is to find a part out or go to a junkyard and try to find one. It's gonna be nearly impossible because I went through this like two years ago. It was so hard to find the trunk for the convertible. But crazy enough, if you had the coupe version of this car and you needed to replace the lid, you can easily pop into any junkyard and find one. You might even be able to find one at the same exact color as your car. All right, you guys see up here, the liner? Well, I got this replaced not too long ago because uh, the glue just stopped working and it just kind of fell apart. So I had to replace just the back portion, not the front. That back portion alone was almost $1,000, guys. That doesn't even include the front. The front is probably another six, $700, which is absolutely insane. But see, if you had a sedan or a coupe, you can get this entire liner for like 500 bucks brand new, or you can just stop at a junkyard and probably get it for like 100 bucks, maybe even 50, 75 bucks. By the way, guys, I love my BMW convertible. I'm not trying to trash it in any way, but I feel like if you're in the market for one, these are things you should know before you decide to purchase one. Hmm, which drawback should I talk about next? Okay, I got one. I'm almost positive you guys have seen a BMW hardtop convertible with these trim pieces missing off the top. The design on these little moldings that go up here are absolutely atrocious, guys. All right, so this is what one of the pieces looks like. They go like right here. I'm just gonna place it here. That's not really snapped into place, but I wanted to show you. They go right here. I'm gonna install these in a bit, but let's just pretend right now that they're properly installed. Let's say anything makes it underneath this portion and latches on with the right amount of pressure. These completely snap right off. They'll snap off and if you're lucky, they'll stay right here where you can just kind of snap them into place. But most of the time, it ruins the inside mechanics right here, this plastic clip, and it ruins the springs that are right here. I don't know if you guys can see that. Let me see if I can zoom in. You see those springs right there? It ruins the springs. And guess what happens if you ruin those springs, which is very likely to happen if you snap those molding pieces off. If you break those springs, not only do you have to swap out one of these expensive plastic pieces, you also have to swap out this hinge for a brand new one because those springs that get ruined, they don't sell them separately. And not only that, they're built into this hinge. So you have to buy a brand new hinge, which is extremely expensive, guys. All right, let's put it like this. This trim piece, the hinge here, this other trim piece, and the hinge here were almost 600 bucks, if I remember correctly. It could have been a little bit over 600 bucks, but that doesn't even include labor, which is a pain in the ass to install that. And that was through FCP Euro. That would have gone through the BMW dealer. It was almost like 900 bucks. I already had installed the new hinges here. Sadly, I didn't get that on camera, but once I drop the top, I'll show you how easy it is to do yourself. And then after that, I'll go ahead and install the new uh, plastic moldings to these springs. I've never done it before, but it should be pretty easy. All right, so I went ahead and raised the top just a little bit so I can show you guys exactly how to replace this hinge right here. You see this small torque bolt right here? That's one of the bolts that you need to remove. And there's also a bolt down there that you need to get to, which is gonna be really hard to reach. So you might have to take off this plastic molding as well, which is pretty much double-sided taped onto the top. So if you try to remove this with a heat gun, you're probably gonna break it and gonna have to buy another one. And this is like 60 bucks, man. So yeah, the torque screw right here and the bolt down here, and this comes loose, but of course it's much easier said than done because you have to have somebody be able to support these shells right here, either with a tool or by hand, and that could get a little tricky. By the way, when you purchase this plastic molding and the hinge over there, 
These clips don't come included. You have to buy these separately as well. Yet another reason why not to buy BMW hardtop convertible. So the functions of these freaking cheap plastic clips are essentially you get the, the spring from the, the rail to go in between these two pieces of the plastic molding. And then you put this over it and then there's a flap up top that closes it shut. So that keeps it attached to the rail. Honestly, it's a stupid design and I can't believe that modern BMWs use a very similar system as this. Okay, so first I have to remove uh, these little plastic things that hold the spring in place. They pretty much come installed for safety factors so the spring doesn't either scratch something or hurt you. All right, I'm gonna remove the top one as well. And that's pretty much it. You see how the springs are now loose? Now I should be able to sandwich these springs between the clips and the roof molding. The thing with these clips is you wanna make sure that you install them correctly because if you don't and you have to remove it from this section right here, oh, it's a pain, it's a pain. I really don't wanna screw this up. Okay, all right, that's two clips. Let's go ahead and pull this back, okay. All right, all right, so that was much easier than what I thought. I went ahead and I sandwiched the spring against the clips and the molding right here. And then now these plastic pieces right here, they have like these little doors that I have to close. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That's one. All right, that's two, three. Oh, but I didn't break that. These clips are so sensitive, you can easily break them, guys. All right, that's four. All right, so this should be installed properly. You see how it's springy like that? What happens is that even when you have the top down, something gets in between right here and it just pulls it back, breaks the spring, breaks this clips, and then you're pretty much screwed. That's pretty much what happened when my wife drove my car for one day. She took it to the automatic car wash. Uh, the trim got caught up and it just tore the spring, the clips and everything. and. There you go, $650 later. All right, I went ahead and installed this side as well off camera. And as you guys can see, these clips, let's say um, your molding piece is still attached to the rail, you would have to take these clips if they're not already broken and they're a pain to get to. You have to be really careful or you can break them. Anyways, now for the moment of truth. If I installed it correctly, then it should be an easy, smooth transition when I open and close the top. If I didn't install it correctly, we might hear some cracks and some pops and uh, some cha-ching coming out of my wallet. <laughs> Let's see. Okay. Oh crap, I forgot to install one piece. I forgot to install these two little arms that go right here. I really, really hope I don't have to take this all off just to install that. Sadly, I think that's the case. I will have to take these off just to install this. And I'm so pissed. Remember I just said that it's really hard to remove these little clips and it's a nightmare to do? Well, guess who has to do that? Okay, so I got this installed. I was trying to remove these clips right here and they were nearly impossible and I honestly didn't want to waste all that time trying to get them out. So I pretty much finessed this in there. I put this section in first like that and then I put the bottom section in sideways and then I just kind of forced it to the side and it snapped into place. I did the same thing to the other side as well. So it worked out. Now, the moment of truth. All right, let's see. All right, looking good. And this side looking good as well. Let's go ahead and pull the top back all the way. Hopefully we don't get no cracks and no pops. So far, so good. Okay, and now for the final test. Crazy how complicated this whole top system is. There you go. You see that little piece right there? Yep. There you have it, guys. There you have it. Oh, actually, let me put the windows up. There you go. Well, there you have it, guys. I finally finished the trim piece. It's been like more than half a year since I did it. But anyways, now you guys know how to do it. And now you know why you shouldn't buy a convertible BMW. 
if you don't have the money aside for repairs like that. All right, guys, so the next reason, let me go ahead and open up the top and I'll show you guys. All right, so I went ahead and partially opened the top so I can show you something that you must do with hard top convertibles to ensure that they function properly. Essentially, these tops, every once in a while, you wanna make sure that you maintain them properly. So for example, the rubber seals that you see along the panels here, right here and right here, they have to be conditioned. Got to condition the seals right here as well and the ones that go along the top. And as you can see, I am guilty of not doing it for a very long time. This looks really crusty right here. But today I'm going to go ahead and show you guys how to condition them so they don't dry rot and then you don't have to replace them. Because if I'm not mistaken, replacing these seals, you can't do them individually. You have to buy the whole set and it's like $1,500, something like that. I remember looking at Also, it's very important that you condition the rubber seal right here, which is uh, attached to the rear glass. Uh, because if you don't, they start to dry rot and just kind of fall apart, especially if you live in a hot state and you park the car outside. I know this because I didn't condition the rubber seal that used to be right here and it just started to fall apart and flake and became a mess. So then I just took it all off. The problem is that they don't sell this rubber seal individually. The only way you can get it is if you buy the entire rear glass, which as you can imagine, this is a BMW we're talking about. So it's very expensive. What's up, brother? Oh, you do? Yeah. yeah, I appreciate it, man. You like cars? Yeah, I like cars. Hey, cool. I like Civics, though. All right, so the first thing I'm going to do is clean all this nasty stuff off the rubber seals, wipe it down really good. And then I'm going to go ahead and use this product called Gummy Fledge Stift. I'm sure I'm saying that wrong. This is a German product, but it is what it is. Gummy, and then I'm sure that P is silent, so Gummy Fledge Stift. Anyways, I'm going to use this to condition the rubbers. Um, I've here, this is one of the best products to use and it's really easy to apply. If you guys want to correct me about the pronunciation on that product, that's fine. Uh, feel free to do it in the comment section below. All right, so now I'm gonna go ahead and use this gummy fledge and condition the leathers. And then we'll move on to the next thing that you must do if you wanna maintain the convertible top the right way. All right, so I went ahead and conditioned all the rubber seals that you see, the ones that I pointed out earlier, which are the ones here on the side. Top section here, top section here, right here, right underneath here, back here and the side right here. Oh, and of course this top and side one that is right here. And let me show you guys something. This is before I applied the gummy fledge. Look at all the dirt that came out of the seals. And I think the last time that I went ahead and wiped down the seals and conditioned them, it was about a year and a half ago. And look how much build up in that little bit of time. So if you're looking to do this to a convertible, it doesn't have to be a BMW, but pretty much any other hardtop convertible, you want to at least condition and clean the seals at least once every six months, I would say. Look, this is freaking terrible. Look at that. Yuck. Backside as well. Also, the little foam tip got pretty dirty really fast, but it wasn't as good as I thought it would be for the application. I already freaking lost the damn shit. Oh, look at it, it's down here. There it is. Completely useless. So I ended up finishing the job just by using a regular microfiber towel and just saturating the towel with the product. All right, so the second thing we need to do maintenance wise to the hard top convertible is the moving parts. You wanna make sure we grease them. That way they don't strain themselves as much when they're closing and opening pretty much. I'm gonna be using WD-40 right now. It's not the best option because it's such a thin product that you would have to reapply this much more frequently. Originally, I bought something called Croil Oil. I'll put a screenshot here on the video so you guys can see it. But see, I don't know where I stored it at. So for video demonstration purposes, I'm just gonna use the WD-40 and whenever I find the Croil Oil, I'll go ahead and do that off camera. So essentially what this WD-40 is gonna do is clean between the hinges here and add lubrication so that way when we activate the top to go up or to go down it's going to be a more fluid stress-free motion all right so i'm going to go ahead and activate the top to see what parts move all right so we know exactly what to lubricate okay put this down a little bit so it's not at 90 degree right there so essentially we're going to go ahead and lubricate the arms right here the hinge that's up here uh, these two hinges, one and two. I mean, this is pretty much brand new. I don't think it needs it, but I'll go ahead and grease it up either way. 
Uh, we got the hinges right here. And then there's hinges towards the top, which I will open the convertible a little bit more to expose that. And I'm gonna go ahead and do the same side for this side as well. Make sure we get all the joints completely saturated. And get some right back here as well. All right. And we got the joints all the way up here as well. There you go. I'm gonna go ahead and continue to move the top so it exposes uh, the back metal moving parts. Right, right there, perfectly exposed. Yeah, you see all these moving parts right here? This is all very, very expensive. There's so many moving parts. You see one, two, three, four, five, six, and then up there, there's seven. And of course we have these up here as well. Oh my goodness. This is why dealing with a convertible is very, very complicated. All right, I went ahead and sprayed them all. I'm gonna go ahead and close the convertible and open it back up and then respray it one more time just to make sure I didn't miss a spot. By the way, just a warning if you're planning to do this yourself, this is not the right way to hold the top open like this. I read that this arm right here cannot be 90 degree or lower it has to be more than 90 degrees because of like the hydraulic pressure also you would need a tool that kind of sits back here and it props the back panel right here so anyways uh this is not the right way to do it so just full disclosure so yeah as you can see owning a bmw convertible takes significant more upkeep and attention so if you're not willing to do that every so often then you're better off getting a coupe or a sedan failing to maintain in the top the way that bmw wants you to do it can cause the convertible top to fail and let's say you ruin it completely where you have to purchase a brand new hardtop convertible unit. Yeah, that's about $15,000. At that point, you might as well get rid of the car. All right, so all the rubber seals are conditioned and all the moving parts are greased. Typically, if you're driving a convertible like this one and you hear kind of rattling or squeaking coming from the top, normally means that it's time to do some maintenance work on it. I've been recently hearing some squeakiness coming from like this portion of the car. So this should address that. People are so quick to say when their top breaks, oh my God, it's so unreliable. It's a money pit. But the real question is, did you do the proper maintenance to make sure that it runs smoothly? Probably not. And the last reason you probably shouldn't get a hard top convertible BMW is because you'll always have that thought on the back of your head. What if the hard top convertible breaks? I'm sure I'm not the only one that thinks about it all the time. It's always sitting in the back of my mind. What if the hard top convertible breaks? Because that is a complete nightmare. Anyways, guys, those are a few reasons why you shouldn't buy a hard top convertible BMW. Like I said, I absolutely love my convertible and I wouldn't trade it for a coupe. That said, if you're in the market for one, these are things you need to know before you make your decision if you're going to purchase one or not. If this video does well, I might just do the opposite of why you should get a hard top convertible BMW. Let me know if you guys want to see that in the comments section below make sure and like the video if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future content and as always thanks for watching till next time